Today is the last ever video in this apiary. I'm going to talk to you about how to move your apiary a small distance. Hi, I'm Lawrence Edison Black Mountain Honey. Welcome to another episode of No Nonsense Beekeeping. I'm going to talk to you in this video about why I'm moving this apiary and talk to you about all the important steps to take into account when you're moving an apiary a short distance. So I'm sure everyone's aware of the three foot or three mile rule. What it basically says is you can move a colony of bees up to three feet in any direction and the bees will find their way back in. Anything over three feet, if you're gonna go over three feet, you need to go at least three miles. That's the basis of the rule, because if you move it, say four or five feet away, the bees just can't work out where it is. But if you move it over three miles away, they're so discombobulated, they don't know where they are, so they reorientate back to that new position. That's the rule. Obviously, there's a little bit of play in those distances, but that is what they say, three foot or three miles. So when you're moving an apiary a short distance, like I'm doing here, my bees are there and I want to put them over there. They're going about 50 to 60 meters away from where they are. There's two ways that you can approach this. If this is the middle of the season, it's July, it's sunny, or if it's in Wales, it's rainy, but it's still July, then you cannot just pick up your colonies and take them from apiary point A over to apiary point B. You will lose a lot of bees. All of the older bees will die. because You'll take your colony, take it from there, put it over there, all the bees will fly out and they'll just go back to the original site. You'll end up with lots of clusters of old bees and no beehives. Not something that you want to do. So if you're doing this in the middle of the summer, what you need to do, really, really annoying, you need to take those beehives and you need to move them away up to three miles away for around six weeks. And again, you can probably do it after three weeks and you might get a little bit of drift. I'd say to be safe though, six weeks is a really good figure to make sure that the majority of the bees in that colony have died and been replaced with younger bees that are gonna be orientated to your semi position before you bring them back to that new position. So it's a two stage approach. You've got apiary A, apiary B, and then you need an apiary C as a six week stop gap. That works and that works really, really well. However, in the winter, you don't need to do it that way. What you need to be looking out for in the winter is a nice two or three week cold spell. You want a prolonged cold spell here. Don't think it's gonna be two or three degrees over a weekend. That's an opportune moment to go and do it because you move them over on that weekend and then Monday comes and it's 15 degrees and all the bees will just fly out of the beehive go back to their original spot, and in the winter, they die even quicker. So you're looking for that prolonged period. That's where I am at the moment. I've made the decision, I'm moving them from there, I'm putting them over there, it's about 10 degrees today. Little bit of bee activity, not much, but on the horizon, it doesn't look too cold either. So I'm waiting for that cold snap. I don't need it minus 10, minus 20 degrees, doesn't need to be that. I want it around freezing though. I want it so the bees are in a tight, cluster but not a super tight cluster there is a risk here that if you get it too cold when you move them if you drop the bees the cluster could fall off like that they can't make their way back up onto the frames these are extreme conditions i'm talking about unlikely to see those in the uk so if you're gonna make a move in the uk and you're aware of the three foot or three mile rule it doesn't necessarily apply in winter but you're looking for that three week gap of relatively cold weather, as close to freezing as possible. Once you find that gap, first day, take your bees from site A, place them over to site B. You don't even need to strap them in. The bees aren't gonna be flying when it's naught degrees. You might get a couple come out, but you can afford to lose a couple. And that is it. That is all I'm gonna do. So this video is the last video that you're gonna see in this apiary. I might do a little bit of the actual challenges of moving them from there to there, but believe me, it's gonna take me about an hour just to pick up some pallets, pick up some beehives, put them in their new position. But oh my God, the new apiary is so much better. The reason I'm at this apiary is the forage is incredible, but there's a lot of negatives to it. You look at the trees in the background there, absolutely battered during the last storm. They're falling down onto the colonies. Now I've got other colonies around here in open sunshine, and they work so much harder than the bees that are tucked away out of the sun. 
So I'm really, really excited because I'm gaining two major benefits here. One, I'm not going to get my bees crushed when the next storm comes along. And two, I think I'm going to see a big increase in honey yields. So there you go. If you're thinking of moving your bees, do it in the winter. It's so much easier. The three foot, three mile rule doesn't apply as long as you get that prolonged cold snap. Get them into a suitable location while you've got the time. Don't wait until it's nice and warm and the bees are flying again, because then you need to go down that six week route with an additional apiary in the middle becomes a real faff. So I hope you enjoyed that video. As always, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the bell so you're notified of every video and I'll see you next time.